So how many of you have a bunch of new CSA customers this year because of the COVID situation? Raise your hand. Now here's my next question. What's your strategy for making sure they stick around? So here's a news flash. Your customers, your brand new rookies, they do not instinctively know how to use your CSA box. And they do not instinctively know how to be successful CSA members. What I've learned over the years is that as much as I may not want to accept this reality, it's my job to coach them to success after the point of purchase. In other words, I need to teach my customers how to use the product. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you my formula, my actual curriculum for what I teach my CSA members. It's my secret sauce. And I'm unveiling it all to you today because I want you to nail this. I want your customers to come back. And I know how very important it is that you get this right if you want that to happen. Let's dive in. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 64 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I'm your host, Corinna Bench from Shared Legacy Farms, a 400 member CSA out in Elmore, Ohio, also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other CSA farmers like me get better at messaging and marketing their farm. How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining me today. You can find the show notes for this episode at MyDigitalFarmer.com forward slash 64, the number 64. And if you're new to the podcast, I want to say welcome. If you end up liking this show, please hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you tune in every single week. And for all my usual listeners and for all of you, especially who send me emails that say, hey, I'm loving the podcast. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for showing up every week to kind of affirm what I'm doing here and let me know that it's working for you too, that the techniques and strategies that I'm sharing on the podcast are in fact, making a difference for your bottom line as well. That really motivates me to keep working and sharing what I'm learning with all of you. Today, I'm really excited about this particular episode. It's going to be a meaty one, and I have a feeling it's going to end up being one of the podcasts that I point back to again and again, because I am going to share with you what I call the customer success path for a CSA member and specifically kind of the curriculum or the playbook of what I teach my CSA members to turn them into CSA masters. So if you are a vegetable CSA, if that's your gig, you're really going to love the stuff that I share in here because it's going to be really specific. And if you maybe have a different kind of CSA, I'm also going to share kind of a framework or kind of categories and questions that you should think through as you try to map out your own curriculum or playbook to help your CSA members succeed. I wanted to start out by telling a story. I don't know if some of you know this, but I actually play the guitar. And I learned how to play when I was in college because I wanted to become a camp counselor at my Bible camp that I'd been going to forever as a, as a child. And I wanted to be a, finally become a camp counselor. And so I thought that if I told them I knew how to play the guitar on my application, that I would have a better chance of getting the job. Well, guess what? I got the job. And then I was like, oh, crap, I better learn how to play the guitar. So I learned how to play the guitar in like three months. I started practicing um, while I was at college and I needed to learn how to kind of learn the basics of guitar really fast. And so I found somebody at my school who played already and I started meeting with him one-on-one 
and he showed me the ropes, how to hold the guitar. Then he kind of showed me like, where does the strap go so that you can stand while you're holding it? How do you strum? What's a strum pattern? And he taught me the E minor chord. That was the very first chord that I learned. So any of you who have learned how to play the guitar, you know that that's probably the easiest chord that you can possibly learn. After that, I learned the E chord because that's just adding one more finger down on the strings. And then, only then, did I begin to progress through the basic chords. I learned how to play C, then D. Why am I going into this story? Well, when you're learning how to do something for the first time, there's kind of a proper way to go about doing it. There's a scope and a sequence that makes sense. I needed to learn how to play the guitar really fast. And so my teacher wasn't going to teach me how to play B minor or like some freaking, you know, bar chord that's really hard to do. He's not going to start with an advanced concept. He's going to teach me the first step, the first most obvious step. And in this case, that was, hey, let's teach you E minor. <laughs> let's teach you how to do a strum pattern and we'll start there and build momentum. It's the same way when it comes to any other product or any other skill set. And I want you to think about your CSA product as something that you might need to actually teach, that you've got to support your customer when they buy a CSA membership they're not necessarily going to know how to succeed with that product. It's a tough thing to learn how to use a CSA box, especially if you do a traditional CSA where you get what you get. You don't get to choose what goes into your box. You can't just assume that your customers are going to know how to make that work. And so I have learned over the years how very important it is to step into the gap and provide help and coach my customers for how to learn how to succeed at the CSA way. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you may have heard my story, how I even began Digital Farmer. About three or four years ago now, we were having trouble as a CSA farm with retention. I mean, we kind of hovered around that 55 to 60% retention every year. And with a 400 member CSA, that's a lot of people to replace every year. And I didn't have any marketing uh, guru wisdom at that time. So I wanted to solve that problem. And I began to call my CSA master members. I wanted to understand why is it that the ones who love my CSA, why are they sticking around? And what is it that they're doing differently than the ones who are leaving? Because I thought if I can figure out what their hacks are, how they overcame the obstacles to the CSA way, then maybe I can share those with the new people who are coming into my pipeline and decrease this attrition rate. So that's what I did. And I got on the telephone. I had sometimes 45 minute conversations with about 40, 30 to 40 members in my CSA. And after you have that many conversations with people, you start to hear the same patterns over and over again. And it was a groundbreaking moment in our business because out of those conversations, I discovered what I'm sharing with you today, what I call the CSA customer success path. I saw these are the, the things, these are the mileposts, these are the learnings, these are the mistakes that they made, these are the big aha moments that really accelerated them through the CSA journey and turned them into CSA ninjas, right? Like superstars who know how to really maximize their box every week. And I did begin to teach that information. So I sort of identified a scope and a sequence, a curriculum path of sorts. And I committed to that season, I think it was 2016, 2017, I committed to trying to introduce those new teachings to my new season. So every week I would show up inside of our Facebook group and I would have a video tutorial for a certain vegetable or I would teach a concept or teach a storage tip or a mistake that many masters made at the beginning so that people wouldn't make, make those in the future, right? Every week there was something new, some kind of content release. This was the one thing that I changed that season. And as a result of changing it, my, the momentum in my Facebook group and in my CSA in general skyrocketed. 
my customers started experiencing growth like never before. They stopped making the mistakes. They felt supported. There was so much energy in the tribe as people shared their their quick wins, the things they were learning. And at the end of the season, when I asked people to renew, I had that ridiculous like 79% renewal rate before the end of October, right? And I can only attribute that jump in retention to this one thing that I changed, which was coming alongside my customers and giving them a success path. So that's why I stand on my soapbox now and I preach this to the masses that I really feel like this is the secret sauce behind customer retention. If we want our customers to come back, we've got to look at this process, this product, sort of like I did with my guitar, right? Like I need to, I needed to learn how to play the guitar fast. Well, there was a best way to get onboarded into that. There was a first thing to learn, then a second thing, then a third thing to, to grow my confidence and build me to mastery. And it's the same with CSA. There are certain things that your customers should learn first. There are certain things they should learn, period. And so what are those things? We're going to dive into that today. I want you to realize that you need to see yourself as a guide to all of your CSA members. CSA is like a minefield. There are so many things that could go wrong, so many traps they could fall into that will discourage them, so many mindsets that can begin to make them think they're a failure. And so we want to identify what those things are, what do we need to teach so that we can shorten the learning curve that is CSA. Now, I think the reason why this process works that I'm about to share with you is because it is hitting the excite phase of the customer value journey. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to check out a workshop that I've created for farmers. It's called the customer value journey. You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash customer value journey to learn more about it. But I walk you through the eight stages that customers go through in any brand, all right? This is something that could be applied to any kind of business, not just farming, not just a CSA product, but customers walk through predictable stages as they grow in their alliance to a brand. And so if you know what those stages are, then you can engineer processes and systems in your business to make sure that people don't get stuck somewhere. So they keep moving and graduating to the next level until they turn into a brand ambassador that loves your product and buys pretty much everything that you offer them. So there is a a phase called the excite phase in the customer value journey. It's right in the middle and it happens after someone buys. And the great brands build a process into the journey of the product so that once someone purchases the product, they get excited about it. They teach them how to use it. They show them hacks and tricks and give them quick wins so that as soon as a a customer Um, learns how to use the product. It accelerates their learning. It makes them feel more excited about the product, gives them a positive feeling about the product so that they'll want to come back and buy again. So many brands do not build this piece into their funnel, into their buying journey. And then they wonder, why is it that my customer had a failed experience with my product? So today I'm going to share with you um, what's in our CSA curriculum, okay? The Shared Legacy Farms CSA playbook. This is my success path. And I want to also give you a chance to access this particular success path in more detail. And I'll talk with you in a moment about how you can do that. So a reminder, this is for a vegetable CSA. So we do a traditional CSA where you get what you get. You don't get to choose what's in your box every week. And so I especially needed to come up with a system, right, to coach people through the veggie process. This past week, actually week one of our CSA this year, the, the, all of our members got um, garlic scapes in their box. And for a brand new rookie member, they have no idea what these curly cue things are in their box when they open it up. And I have learned over the years that I can't just put that in their box and expect them to read my mind and know exactly what to do with it. And so in years past, people would probably compost that or just 
you know, stick it in the back of their fridge until it went bad and then they throw it away and feel guilty. But now I know, hey, for stuff like that, I especially need to walk alongside them and point to its amazing features and how it can be used and how cool they are and tell the story of it. And now that I do that, people are so geeked about garlic scapes and they feel empowered to know what to use or how to use them. So for my kind of CSA, I really need to provide that support because so many things that come into their box might not be things that they would have chosen themselves. So when we think about a success path, let me walk you through kind of what mine looks like. I want you to think about it like this. It's kind of like the beginner's guide to your product. So how can you on-ramp someone into your product so that they will avoid the common pitfalls or mistakes and so that they will achieve mastery faster. Now, I'm not saying that I can bring someone to CSA Masteries in a season. I don't think that's possible. And I actually teach that in our curriculum to make sure that people know that and set expectations. Um, But that is the goal of the success path, to onboard someone into the product, empower them so they can keep making progress and moving forward. And they know the steps that they're supposed to do, first, second, third. How do I get to the finish line so that I'm successful with this product? In Elmore, which is the town where I live, this past May, they um, replaced, they had to destroy the bridge that goes into our town. So Route 51 leads into Elmore, and it's, it's like the artery into our town. And it was announced that this bridge was falling apart, it needed to be replaced, and they literally had to close this road into our town. So the town of Elmore created a really great publicity campaign way in advance, two months in advance, started promoting this around the area of uh, Elmore so that residents and people outside of Elmore would know, hey, this is coming, prepare, and gave very specific like detour routes. Here's how you can still get into Elmore. Here are the two or three ways, depending on what direction you're coming from, so that we were trying to educate people. This is how you overcome this, you know, this detour situation. Now, why am I telling you this story? Because I, I feel like it's a metaphor for what we do with a success path, right? We don't want people to hit an obstacle in the CSA journey because it is a minefield the first year. There's a lot of mistakes that members make. There's a lot of sense of failure and vegetable waste that can happen. And we don't want people to run in to that obstacle and be like, I don't know how to get to Elmore, right? Like, I don't know how to get to the other side. I give up. I'm just going to turn around and go home. I'm going to turn around and stop using this product. I'm not going to buy it again next year, right? Instead, we can be proactive. We can say, hey, I know people are going to hit that that roadblock and I'm going to create a detour. I'm going to create a path, a success path that shows them the way. I'm going to make sure they know they're going to hit a detour and that it's going to be hard. But I'm also going to promise them that I have a way out. So as you consider what your success path might be, I want you to imagine that you are a coach and a guide to your product. And you're going to detour people around some of these minefields and these obstacles. So Get out your pencil and paper now or, you know, hit pause and go grab one. And I want you to write down these bullet points because these are the general topics that I think you need to think about as you're building a success path or a curriculum playbook for how to get your CSA members to succeed. So I've got about, let me look here. Oh man, I think I have like 10, 10 bullet points and I'm going to walk you through them here step by step. This is what I consider to be the content, the general categories of content in a success path. So number one is common mistakes to avoid. When I was researching my CSA customers, this was a question that I asked them. What were some of the mistakes that you made over and over again? Or what were the pitfalls or the things that kept happening that were um, mistakes for you that you learned the hard way? If you could give advice to a future customer, what would it be, right? That was another way that I kind of worded the question. And I got a ton of ideas, but they all tended to fall into like, I probably had like three or four things that were said the most. And I took notes on that. And those are the things that I focus on when I train my customer. And I'll tell you what those are in just a second, but common mistakes to avoid. So think about your product. What are the mistakes that your customers seem to fall into when they use your product at the beginning? Quick wins is the second one. What are some really quick hacks or tips that you can share 
that will motivate someone. So an example for for my farm is uh, the sheet pan meal. Like when I learned about sheet pan meals and what they were, how fast it was to put a meal on the table with a sheet pan meal, I thought, oh my God, where have you been my whole life? And I was able to execute on the sheet pan meal strategy immediately, like that night, and have immediate results and feel good about myself. So if you can identify what are the, the strategies and the tricks from, that I know from my own customers or that I know about my product. If I taught these things, they're fast, they're easy to learn. You don't have to take a lot of time. You don't have to go buy a lot of stuff to make them happen. Share those things in your curriculum, one or two, because they motivate people. And I also put these early on in the process. This is not the last thing that I teach. It's one of the first things that I teach because I want to give somebody a win that motivates them to keep moving forward. They're like, wow, this is really working. And it makes them feel good about my product. Okay. So kind of jot that down. What are two or three quick wins? I'm going to give you some suggestions in a second for what mine looks like. Another category is aha moments. This is actually really easy for me because I used to be a clueless suburb girl who had no idea how food was grown. And then I married a farmer and I moved out onto a farm and like everything was new to me. I'd be like, oh my God, like why is the lettuce turning into a tall tower? What's going on? And Kurt would patiently explain to me that that's how plants grow. (laughs) And so, you know, there were all these little moments like that where I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there was a difference between field corn and sweet corn. Like, you know, these little little nuggets that just still blow my mind. So what are those kinds of things that relate to your product, like how to use your product? What are the aha moments when your customers find those out? They're like, what? You can freeze tomatoes whole? Are you freaking kidding me? Like that is an aha moment, folks. People don't know that. So think about what are those things? And that's also a quick win, right? That falls into that category too. But identifying identifying some of those kinds of bullet points Throw those into your curriculum. Uh, another category is real um, expectations. So I, I take some time to think about how can I set or reset realistic expectations for this product? So before they even get their first box, what are some of the things that I need to make sure that I tell them before we get started so that they don't come in to this experience with one idea of how they think it's going to go? And then when it doesn't go that way, they feel disappointed. So we try to get really clear on what those expectations are. So pay attention as you have a season under your belt, pay attention to where were those moments when customers seemed confused or where were your customers disappointed? And then ask yourself, kind of walk yourself back and be like, why were they disappointed? What was the expectation they had instead? And if you see a pattern, like the same thing being said again and again, it's like, okay, I need to make sure I tell people that there aren't going to be as many things in the first few boxes of the season. And as long as I say that, I now say that to my customers a lot. Uh, before we ever start so that when they get their first three boxes and there isn't as much stuff as in the later season, they're not like, oh, I didn't know that this is how it was going to be. Okay. So what are some of those expectations that you need to set? Write a few of those things down. Tools and equipment is the fifth topic or the fifth category you can think through here. So I've always believed that In order for, I think about this in terms of my my crew, um, if I want to manage my team well, like I need to make sure that I provide them the tools so that they can be successful at their job. And it's the same for your customer. You need to make sure that they've got the right tools and equipment in their kitchens, in their toolkit to be able to use your product successfully. So there's a handful of kitchen tools that I think are really helpful. Now, I happen to be a kitchen tool gadget girl, uh, a gearhead. You could call me a kitchen tool gearhead. I have a lot of things that are now in my attic that I don't really use very much, but there are a handful of things that I use a ton. And so that's what I teach people. Like these are the tools that you need. And I'm going to talk about specifically um, about a couple of them right now. So green bags, if you don't know about Debbie Meyer green bags, these are like, you can buy 20 bags for maybe eight bucks on Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond, you need to tell your CSA customers about green bags because these things will prolong the life of your produce. People can throw their lettuces in there, their 
uh, berries, their uh, bananas, things that tend to be highly perishable. I put them into the green bag and I teach my customers to put them into a green bag. The green bags are plastic. They have a certain kind of polymer that absorbs ethylene gas. Um, and then this causes whatever's inside the green bag to last quite a bit longer than if they used normal breathable bags from the grocery store. I've had really great success with them. So I now teach them to my customers. My customers are experiencing success with them. So they're now talking it up amongst everyone else in the Facebook group. So there's kind of like social proof. And we just say, look, this is a, if you're going to get one thing to help solve this issue of, of veggie waste, buy yourself some more time to get through some of those veggies that store up in your fridge, get the veggie bags. Okay. So that's an example of a, a tool that I want them to know about so that they can be more successful in avoiding waste and in using our product. Another category is to consider this. Can you break down anything into steps? So if you look at your product as a whole, what, how can you organize that and break it down into steps? So going back to my example with the guitar, there's so many things that my teacher could have taught me about how to play the guitar, but he rightly knew the right order in which to teach me that. So he's like, you know what? First, you need to learn how to hold the guitar. Like what side, what hand is actually holding the fingerboard and what hand is strumming? Like, you got to start there. Um, how do you tune a guitar? How do you hold the pick? How do you strum? What's a strum pattern? Um, what's the first chord that you need to learn, right? So if you can break down your CSA product into steps, the best thing to learn first, then second, do not start with something really complicated. Uh, that is also a really good kind of tip. Or maybe you think about steps in terms of how to pick up your box. So that's actually something that we have a cheat sheet, like the six steps to picking up your box. We're removing all of the confusion and we're saying step one, open your email so you know what's coming to you so you can start meal planning and thinking about it before you ever even get the box. Step two, do this. Step three, do this, right? Um, we break down the most essential things that we think someone needs to do over the course of the week to be successful with using their box and we just spell it all out for them. Break through the clutter, make it easy for them. So that's kind of another thing to think through. The vegetable exit strategy. So you come to the end of the week, you've got uh, stuff still left in your fridge that you haven't used. You're about to go pick up your next box and things are beginning to stockpile. You're getting stuck with a few of these veggies. What do you do? So how are you going to support your customer when that happens? What is the game plan? So we have something called vegetable exit strategies that we teach to our members. We teach them things like, hey, do you know how to blanch and freeze? We make sure that we educate people. You guys, I didn't know how to blanch and freeze when I married my husband. So I ha I've got to assume that there are other people in my CSE tribe that also don't know how to do that. So I make no assumptions and I teach people the blanch and freeze method. I pe teach people how to make pesto because you can pesto a whole lot of things. So if you're stuck with something like kale and you're not motivated or excited about making a kale salad or kale chips, um, well, how about making a kale pesto? So we teach kind of these top five exit strategies so that when people get stuck with something and it's beginning to stockpile, they know how to get rid of it so that they don't waste it. Okay. So think about that category. What can you, what are those exit strategies for someone? If you're a beef producer, what are the cuts of meat that are left at the end, right? They, they probably have certain cuts that they always use and that disappear fast. And then kind of towards the end, there's always these final pieces that they're not, you know, they're not really sure what to do with them. And sometimes they just end up tossing them because they're like, I don't know. Identify what those are and provide some support around those particular cuts and let them know, hey, when you get to this point, here's some ideas. All right, another category that we sort of have in our success path is advice from other master members. So we compile uh, like a top 10, top 20 list of 
advice that comes from our master members. And I do this every year. It kind of gets updated and tweaked a little bit. But originally it was it was all that research from my customers that I did of my master members. And I shared what I heard from them. Um, every year I have a survey at the end of the year that I send out to my members. And there's a question in there that's designed to get at this question or to get at this content. And I I kind of send out the results. Hey, here's what came back from that survey. Here's what people said. And my rookies love to read that at the beginning of the season because they're like, oh, please, yes, tell me. What did you learn so I don't make those same mistakes? So that's something that definitely can be in your curriculum playbook. Another category is templates, formulas, cheat sheets. Okay? So especially formulas. Like I, my customer... Um, they really appreciate it when I give them a shortcut, when I say, hey, here's, here's a formula for a basic pesto. Yeah, I, you can pesto just about anything, but if you've never pestoed, well, let me show you the, you know, the five or six steps to building a basic pesto. And here's where you just substitute the green up here, but, but everything else is pretty much the same. So that was something that we started doing the first year. We would create a PDF cheat sheet for pretty much all of the exit strategies. I made an infographic that went along with it, and I have it out there as a tool that I can hand to people when I start talking about this curriculum. Um, consider, here's another category, fan favorites. So as you do this more and more from year to year, you're going to discover that there are certain pieces of content that you teach that really resonate where you get feedback and engagement from your audience where they're like, oh my gosh, that was awesome. That was a quick win. I love the Debbie Meyer green bags or holy cow, those, those green cubes, that, that recipe that you shared for that exit strategy. That's my go-to now for a green, so a green that I don't know what to do. I love it. Like that, everyone loves our green cubes. And the person that originally suggested that was a CSA member many years ago, and now we teach it as one of our top exit strategies. It's a fan favorite, and it comes up in the rotation every year because it was so popular. Um, beet chocolate muffins. So anytime we have beets, the first time the beets come out, we always bring up the beet chocolate muffin recipe that so-and-so shared because every year there's a bunch of people that love it, and now it sort of has this... Um, I don't know, this magic around it, right? There's a special brand around s some of these ideas in general. Uh, Karen Ayers had this amazing tomato sauce last year. She won a contest by um, introducing that to our CSA. So many people fell in love with it, raved about it. So that will be the new addition to the fan favorites this year. So you'll discover some of these things that come up again and again and share those. That can be a part of the success path. People love that kind of stuff. Um, I already kind of said this, but I want to mention it again. Provide a starting point. So as you accumulate this list of things, you're going to have a whole bunch of ideas of things you want to teach, but make sure you tell them start here. Otherwise, they're going to be overwhelmed by all of the stuff. Or maybe you just, you direct where they start. You, you are the controller. You're the gatekeeper of this content release process, right? So make sure you're starting with the simple things, especially if you're a new CSA and you've got new customers that are really beginners at the CSA thing, you're going to, you're not going to start with teaching people how to ferment. I mean, you're just not, don't even go there. You're really doing like basics. And as your audience progresses, as your customer gets more adept at this from year to year, you're going to find that you'll need to provide new pathways for advanced users. And things like fermenting will become much more, or canning will be things that they want to learn. But in the initial stages, that's probably not going to be a part of your success path because there, there just won't be an interest. That's going to be too complicated and overwhelming for a beginner. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say that part of the success path for us is building tribe identity and community. This is actually a really big piece. It's probably one of the pillars on which this stands. So yes, we're teaching this curriculum, that I just went through with you, the kind of the categories, but we're also very conscientious about trying to build a sense of community among the entire CSA membership. So we want people to think things in their mind like, I belong here. These are my peeps, right? Or I'm a part of something bigger than just getting vegetables. Like this is a bigger vision. And um, I'm growing. Like I'm excited because every year I learn something new, right? These are the kinds of tribal thoughts and identity values and community spirit that we want to cultivate. 
And the primary place where that happens is in a social group. So we have a Facebook group. It's kind of legendary. Um, it is so incredibly active. I actually have a Facebook mastery course that I taught. It's still available on um, mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy. You can see it there. But when I first kind of emerged onto the scene with farmers, that was the very first product that I sold because I was I just felt like out of all the things that I did well, I had a kick butt Facebook group, like that it was just driving engagement. That's where all that teaching and content was happening, right? And it was just blowing up my my membership momentum and excitement. And so I taught, you know, people, how do you build an amazing Facebook group? And I just feel like this is the locus. This is the place where this community piece forms and what we're really, really good at. It is a key, key driver for this whole success path. So I want to make sure I say that. Now I hire a CSA coach. That's what I call her. She's essentially the community manager for that group. I'm still a part of that group. I go in on a daily basis and just take a look and see what people have said. And I will engage with a few of the posts with comments. But the primary purpose of my CSA coach is to manage this group, to build relationships with the members there and to cultivate those relationships, help people feel like they're getting to know each other, that they're a part of a tribe. And so she's really the the key facilitator of that piece of the success path. She's doing a weekly unboxing video. She's engaging with the, the comments. So she's sort of been told, hey, when somebody posts something, you have to comment. Make sure you comment on every post. Um, she's communicating and commenting. Like I said, she's um, teaching. She's answering questions when they come up. She's keeping an eye on uh, anybody who might be breaking the rules. And she's cheerleading. She's saying, good job. You guys got this. Here's some tips and tricks. Don't be discouraged. She's just got her finger on the pulse of this group. So, okay. And then finally, I talked about building tribe identity and community. The other piece of this success path that I want to bring up is mindset. Um, part of what we want to teach in this curriculum or think about teaching is do we need to reframe any beliefs or do any kind of thought reversal? So there are a, a few examples here I want to share just to kind of help you see what I mean by this because sometimes people are like, that's a little woo-woo. I don't know what you mean by mindset. But our customers come into our CSA with expectations, with certain ideas of um, what they think the experience will be. They come in with a pain point or with an aspirational goal, right? Like they come in like, I want to, I want to do this. I want to become this. This is something I need, or I would like to be this kind of person. And they see the CSA product as a way to get there. And if that doesn't happen, then they can feel really disappointed and in some cases like a failure. And so I want to make sure that I can coach their mindset so that when these bad thoughts come into their mind, that we can be preventative, right? We can hit them before they even happen and let them know, hey, instead of thinking that, let's think about it this way instead. So some examples of this is uh, the first time that somebody wastes food from their box. They may not say it out loud, but in the back of their mind, they might be thinking, oh, waste. I just wasted. Waste is bad. I'm a failure. Okay. That's what they're thinking and feeling in their mind. And instead, um, a mindset coaching moment as part of this curriculum might be like, hey, all CSA masters started out wasting food. It's a part of the process and you should expect it. You don't want to stay there forever, but you should not expect to be a maestro at that. Like you were going to waste at the beginning. And you have to go through this phase. It's normal. All CSA masters have been there. So when we reframe that experience with that kind of a thought, then a person is like, oh, really? Like, this is normal? I'm not alone? Like, I'm supposed to feel this way? I'm supposed to go through this? Yes. Okay, so that's an example of a coaching moment that we put intentionally into the curriculum so that when it happens, they're not like, surprise. They're not like, oh, I suck. But they're like, oh, okay, this is normal. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to make progress. Um, I shouldn't be surprised if this happens. Another version of this might be um, like this is the thought reversal that failed experiments are progress. 
failed experiments are, are celebrated in our group, actually. So sometimes people will try out something with a vegetable and it's an utter fail. Their, their family hated it or they thought it tasted awful. And they're like, oh man, I suck at this. And instead we want to coach them, change their mindset, thought reversal and say, hey, let's reframe that belief. And let's realize that failed experiments are, are that's just data. That's part of the progress of getting better. You need to have a high tolerance for failure if you want to become a master. You have to fail if you want to become a master. You have to have bad recipe moments. And we want to celebrate when they happen because you're going to learn something from that. And now you're going to be a little bit closer to uh, getting to mastery. Now you know that you don't want to make carrot top pesto because you couldn't stand it. Okay, great. So maybe you don't like carrot top pesto. Move on. Um, and let's see, I have, I have one more here. Um, we tell people that it takes time to become a master. We, we, we try to say it's about a three-year learning curve. And just putting that out there has done wonders for, for us. Because I think people walk in thinking, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to, it's going to take some time to learn this. But I think they think they can learn it in a year. So by saying, uh, you know, average, average uh, CSA mastery takes about three years, according to our research, um, that just helps people kind of anchor where they should be and what their expectations should be so that if they're not at mastery by the end of year one, they don't give up and throw in the towel. They say, okay, I'm going to try. I'm on, to, I'm on to year two. I'm going to stick through it. And they have that stamina kind of like running a marathon. They have that stamina because they paced themselves. Someone has told them it's going to be a three-year journey to get to the finish line. And they're, they're able to pace themselves and renew for another season and, and stick, it, stick through it. Okay, so that's just a few examples of some of the different kinds of mindsets that might go through someone's head and how we have to have an intentional kind of training moment or just a few coaching moments that come up from time to time in the Facebook group where we walk people through that. And, and that is primarily where that happens. I don't have like a video tutorial about these mindset shifts, but we're aware of what they are so that we can address them inside of our Facebook group through um, a quick uh, powwow or like a cheerleading moment when we're doing our Facebook live video unboxings. So, okay. So those are just the overall general categories as you're building your success path. Um, it's going to be different for each of you because some of you don't have a traditional CSA. You might have a different style or maybe some of you are a beef CSA. So you, you would be, you know, having a totally different curriculum than I would is teaching vegetable stuff. So think about those categories, jot down some ideas and map out a, a scope and a sequence for the types of things that you could teach. Now, I know if you're just getting started, don't feel like you've got to do it all your first year. Like identify two or three things that you're going to tackle year one and build those resources and do a content release and feel good about that. Okay. And then next year, year two, build two or three more. And guess what? Now you have six. All right. Then the next year, add two or three more and boom, now you've got a nine piece curriculum, which is pretty much done. And you've got the whole system in place. This is how I built my curriculum. It did not have it ready right away. I made a commitment every week. I will make one vegetable ebook and one veggie video tutorial. And that was really ambitious. I don't recommend that. That was insane. But I was on a mission to prove that this would work. And I just held to that discipline until it was done. And the last veggie tutorial that I did or the last veggie ebook that I wrote, I like had a major celebration. I was like, oh my God, I just, I just ran a marathon. But look at my huge asset that I've just built that I can use again and again and again. And I've been working it for three years um, occasionally adding a new video tutorial into the academy, but for the most part, this, the structure is there. Okay, so that's how you have to look at this. This is a, a resource you'll build slowly and it will compound over time. So I actually have something called the CSA Academy, the Membership Academy. I offer it for free to my CSA members and it is the compilation of all of these resources that I have built over time. The CSA success path lives on the CSA Academy. And it's, it's essentially like a digital library. And the way it formed is that when back in 2017, after I'd finished making all of these resources, originally I just posted them on a web page on my website. I just had, you know, 
veggies 101 and I had them from A to Z, arugula to zucchini. And I would have like video tutorial for arugula, ebook for arugula. And, you know, there was just a link for every single one. It was really ugly looking. And I put it there because I was having customers emailing me saying, hey, uh, I know you made a garlic scape ebook. I can't find it. I can't remember where it is. Where can I get it? Can you send it to me? And I got so sick of having to answer those individual emails that I said, I just got to put this all on one spot. So I made that one web page. And that's what you can do to just get started. Just have a spot on your website where you're logging them and just tell people, go to this page, just call it library or something. And then that's where they can go to access it. Now, after I had made, you know, 40, 50 ebooks for the veggies, and then I'd also been making all these vegetable exit strategy video tutorials and cheat sheets, I was like, this is overwhelming. And it's also incredibly valuable. Like, I'm like, this has a dollar value now. I don't want to just have people come here and steal this. I said, I need to gate this. I need to put this behind an email wall or a login wall. And that's when I decided to move it into this digital library called the Academy. And what I loved about that is I could actually create a more visually pleasing experience for my members. Um, you don't need to go there yet because if you're just getting started, you're just going to have, you know, seven or eight things that you might teach and you can manage that with just a simple web page. But I now have a really awesome resource and I can send my customers to the academy. They get in for free. I get them inside through the back end. They just log in and that's where they go to get their newsletter, to get their um, their recipes each week. That's where they go if they want to quick watch the 10 minute video for um, how to use garlic scapes. Uh, they just learn how to access those, those resources. And it's been an amazing um, feature and support place for my membership. I can also reference it in my Facebook group. I can say, hey, today in, in, we're going to talk about XYZ or this particular vegetable was in your box. Remember, we have an ebook for it. If you need some support, you can grab it at this link. And I can remind them, I can highlight things that have already been made before. And so I can point people into the right direction. So I love having that there. Um, so I want, I guess I want to, I'm going to walk you through what are the different elements of the CSA Academy real quick before I end. And I want you to be aware that this is actually something that many farmers are now a member of. I had farmers reaching out to me and saying, how do I um, find out what you're teaching? Like, can I get an example? Can I see how you taught garlic scapes or can I see an example of the the ebooks you're talking about or the cheat sheets for the formula for a perfect pesto like what do those look like and so I said well come in just I'll come into the academy it's 10 bucks a month um, you just subscribe and then when you want to drop out you just drop out but you can have access to the entire library and you can see how I've organized it so I want to just invite you to try that out I mean $10 investment just to see what it looks like, I think would be just really smart. And even if you just go in and like jot down the table of contents and see how I've organized it, that may be worth $10 for you. But you can get an idea. You could watch a video for how you would teach about garlic scapes, what you would talk about, take notes, and then, you know, make your own version. So I've had a ton of farmers that have been using it that way. It's sort of like their template. They go there to look and see what could I teach, and then they are duplicating it for their own CSA membership. So inside of the CSA Academy, so let me tell you where you can go and get it. Just go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy, and you want to look for the product called CSA Membership Academy. All right. And it's it's a bundled thing. It'll have multiple courses that come along with it. Um, and I'm going to walk you through what those courses are. So right now it's only ten dollars a month. I will be raising that price. Um, but once you lock in at that level, then that's what you get charged per month. OK, so there are uh, six different categories, six different courses or sections that are bundled together. And I kind of have the the, the top is just like the, the membership academy inside of that. I have a welcome video. I have like how to pick up your box at the different sites. So I have a little video where I'm literally in my car driving um, through the pickup process so they can see how it works because of COVID. We're doing drive through So I wanted to be really clear about this is how it's working this year. Um, I have my handbook. The CSA handbook is in there. I have a, a three-part onboarding video series where I break down the most important stuff in the handbook through a video if they'd rather watch the video. So that's kind of like in that parent bundle at the top. 
Then there are several other sections that are bundled. And this is how I decided to break up the success path into these kinds of categories. So there's one section called the Beginner's Guide to CSA. And this is a, I think it's about an hour and 15 minutes total worth of short videos that walk a rookie through the most important things they need to know to be successful at CSA. And so inside of that course, I have things like um, the six steps to picking up your box. I have um, tips of the CSA masters. That's a cheat sheet that they can grab. I have an ebook called The Beginner's Guide to CSA that they can download that kind of maps it all out in ebook form. I have um, storage tips and tools. And that's where I talk about those green bags and um, things like take the tops off your carrots. Um, and then I have a section called the top five vegetable exit strategies. So there's a lot of exit strategies that I teach in the academy in a different section, but I chose my top five. These are the ones that are used the most when you get to the end of the week and you've got stuff left over and you need to clear the fridge. What are the most common strategies CSA masters use to clean the fridge out? And those are the top five. So I teach how to flash, how to flash freeze, how to blanch and freeze. So kind of freezing is one, one category. How to make do-it-yourself veggie broth from scraps. How to roast, how to sh do sheet pan meals, what those are, and how to pesto. And then I also recently added the green cubes because that is sort of a fan favorite. Okay, so that's the um, top five vegetable ex exit strategies. This is all part of the Beginner's Guide to CSA course. Okay, and each of these videos is really short. They're like three to five minutes. And then I have a section at the end called meal planning tools just to help people understand how do people meal plan, what are some different ways you can meal plan, and some resources to help them uh, make decisions about what to eat on a given night to un unlock them. Okay, so that's the beginner's guide to CSA. Then I have um, a section uh, called Vegetable University, and this is uh, has a mother load of information in it. Each vegetable from A to Z has its own video tutorial, and it includes an ebook with like five or six recipes. And the ebook has uh, all kinds of other information, like how to store the veggie, common uses, um, I don't know, other random things that you might need to know about that vegetable. So I'm not going to go through all of them. It's literally A to Z. There are a ton of them. And this year's project is actually to update those videos and make them shorter because when we first built it, some of them were like 25 minutes long. And we're trying to make all the videos under 10 minutes. Um, the third course that's part of that success path is called the Vegetable Exit Strategies. And inside of that bundle, we teach all the different exit strategies that are out there. And there's the top five that I've already mentioned that are in the Beginner's Guide to CSA. But um, there's also things like how to ferment, grilling, um, how, to, how to do smoothies. And so usually the, the title is like formula for a perfect smoothie, um, formula for grilling or grilling 101, um, how to deal with greens. So if you have greens overload, uh, frittatas chili, fresh herbs, so how just all kinds of stuff about how to deal with fresh herbs, salad dressings, um, formula for a perfect hummus, pickling, mason jar salads, sal salsa 101, dehydrating. Those are some of the things that are in that section. So I just gave you a bunch of ideas. Um, we have another course that's bundled with this called the Instant Pot Basics course. Um, so for people who are kind of graduating to a more advanced technique and they want to learn how to use the Instant Pot, that's what I created that for. This year, I'm going to be adding the Air Fryer uh, Challenge. So we'll be putting a new kind of course into the Academy that's all about using the Air Fryer. Um, there's the Canning Club. This is also for more advanced people. I have probably eight different video tutorials and illustrated PDF guides for how to can pickles, how to can strawberry jam, how to can tomatoes with a pressure canner. Um, and I walk people through that step by step. So that's also a part of the academy. And then I have a final one called freezing freezer meals. And this is where we share some of the more popular freezer meal strategies, um, which is kind of its own exit strategy in, in and of itself. All right. So that's kind of the overview of our success path and how we've organized the material 
inside. If you want to see more details and like go in and watch the Met stuff and download those cheat sheets that I'm talking about, you can do that when you're a member of the Academy. So just head to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash Academy. And for 10 bucks a month or 85 bucks a year, you can have like complete access to that whole library. And it's just been an amazing tool for so many CSA farmers who want to do this, who are like, yeah, I want to come behind my members. I want to create a success path. I want to teach them. But man, I don't have time to get started. Like, can you just give me a starting point? Can you show me what's what I sh- what it kind of should look like so that I don't have to make it up from scratch in my mind? And that is a huge time saver for people. So if this is something you're serious about, I think it can be a huge asset um, to helping you improve the customer experience for your members. All right, before I let you go, I'm just going to kind of remind you that Um, Although I shared with you the specific curriculum for what we might teach in the CSA, there is sort of an overall plan. There are many parts that are firing at the same time that are ultimately supporting the customer and hitting this excite phase and and acting as the success path for them. So we've talked about um, the Academy Library. Okay, I just went through that where everything is sort of lives. But in addition to that, Um, I have a newsletter that I send out. I have a weekly email with the newsletter that's on my blog and a recipe. So that's, you know, that's an element of customer support. And if that's what you have and that's where you could start, then start there. Um, In addition to that, I have the Facebook group where that coaching and those video tutorials are happening on a regular basis with Katie. Um, I have a weekly unboxing video, which is hugely popular and that is a big part of the, of the success path. It's kind of like, okay, step by step, here's what you got this week. Here's some ideas for how you can use it. And it breaks it apart into small sound bites, right? So the weekly unboxing is a part of the success path strategy. Just the Facebook group community in and of itself has become um, a resource. So it's not just Katie and myself that are teaching, but the community has become a place where they support each other and they encourage each other. And now that it's so active, that is, it's so powerful. I don't want to be the only one talking in the group. It's way better if I've got the whole audience um, kind of coaching one another along. And, And now that we've been doing this for many years, we've gotten to that place as a Facebook group where they, they're sharing their ideas with each other and they're commenting and giving answers to questions. It's not just me or Katie. So that's also a part of the success path. Um, and then we have that two-week onboarding process before the CSA even begins where we're really intentional about these are the things you most need to know at the beginning before we get started. Let's review. So we kind of pull out the stuff from that beginner's guide to CSA training that's in the academy, and we'll we'll highlight the most important things, and we'll review them before CSA begins in the Facebook group through emails um, that go out, so that everyone who's a rookie like sees that information. And then finally, we have challenges that are happening throughout the season in our Facebook group. Uh, this year, we're going to have I think two of them. One of them is going to be an air fryer challenge, but it's designed to push some of our more advanced members. Uh, to try something new and to grow. And that's also kind of a part of the success path as well for the more advanced user. Okay, so that's the overall plan. Just be aware that there isn't just like one way that you can do this. There can be many different ways that are firing at the same time so that you've got this alignment and this giant uh, machine that's sort of operating for you. Okay, I hope this was helpful. That was Um, a pretty deep dive into my specific curriculum for what I am teaching my CSA members. And this has been a process that has been refined over time. We used to teach a lot of other stuff. And now over the years, we've figured out what are the most important things. We've really distilled it down to the things that matter the most, right? We don't need to cover everything, but we want to get them to the finish line as fast as possible. So what are those things? When you do this well, And if you make this a priority in your business, you are going to find that your customers, they'll see it. They'll see the effort that you're making to support them. They'll try some of this stuff and they'll experience success. It's going to get them excited. They're going to feel loyalty for you and they're not going to want to leave because you know what's addicting? Personal growth. When a person grows and learns something new, they feel great about themselves. They feel like a success and they want more of that. And if you are providing an environment where that's consistently happening, they'll keep coming back and they'll choose your CSA over someone else's every time. 
All right, today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 64. I'm going to have a lot of links there. So go check that out. If you liked this episode, please subscribe to my podcast and please tell another farmer about it. I want as many people as possible to hear about the My Digital Farmer podcast. Um, And I want to just make you aware that I also have a Facebook group. It's called the CSA Marketing Discussion Facebook group. I pop in there from time to time. And in fact, beginning July 12th, which is coming up here in a few days, I'm going to be running a 10-day challenge um, totally free. I'm not selling anything on the back end. I'm just trying. It's called my the email nurture challenge. And during that 10 day challenge, I'm going to be teaching farmers how to build an email nurture sequence. And if you don't know what that is, you can listen to last week's episode, episode 63, where I talk about why those are so important to growing your leads and growing your no like and trust factor with your leads. Um, it's a huge part of my machine, but I wanted to help people build one. And we're going to start that process on July 12th. So you can uh, subscribe to that challenge at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash nurture. And when you do, you're going to get my swipe file of my emails that I send out to people once they join my email list to um, begin this process of onboarding them into the way of eating the CSA way and like giving them quick wins and just that nurturing them along into a strong lead. And then finally, don't forget, if you're interested in joining my academy, if you want to see behind the scenes exactly what I provide to my CSA members as part of their membership fee, You can join the Academy yourself and use it however you need to use it to help you build your own version. Now, please don't take my my PDF guides and just grab them and use them yourself. Um, But you can definitely print them out and make your own, use them to kind of make your own version with your own branding um, for your CSA. It's going to be a great kind of starter place. So go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash Academy. Try it out for a month. See if you like it. I have so many people who love it and it's just saved them a ton of time. And I uh, originally built it for my members and never expected farmers to want to be in it. But it's just so cool to see how it's actually helping farmers out now in, in a big way. And that just makes me smile. So I'm happy to share that resource with you. Thanks for joining me, guys. I know this was a long one, but it was a good one. And I'll catch you next week for another episode of the